The mainstream media has been trying their very best over the past couple of weeks to damage control for Bioware and Dragon Age the Veilguard, but now it seems that they're changing their tune as reports are coming out that this game did not sell well and amidst major backlash. I have a few different things to show off, but before I get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, obviously, when it comes to the mainstream media, we've been pointing and laughing because they said Velgard was an amazing game, near perfect. I mean, they were giving it 8.5s and 9s and almost 10s, which is insane to think now that I've live streamed a full playthrough. It is nowhere even close to a 9 or an 8 or a 7 or even a 6. But now it seems that they're changing their tune. So over the past you know, week. We've heard reports that it has not been selling well. It has not even been able to top Star Wars Outlaws sales. But now we're, of course, seeing them decide to backtrack a bit multiple different outlets, IGN, PC Gamer. Let's start with PC Gamer, actually. They had just posted this article saying, Dragon Age the Veilguard's leap forward in trans inclusion comes from a heartfelt place, but its problems left me feeling frustrated, angry, and tired. Now, obviously, Obviously, a major problem I had with this game were the identity politics. When you were shoving modern day terminology like pronouns and transgender and non-binary in my face, it's not going to sit well with me in a fantasy dragon game, and it didn't sit well with a lot of other people. But when PC Gamer had previously said this was a near perfect game and they're changing their tune all of a sudden, it's mighty suspicious. And of course, when it comes down to it, we're talking about an outlet with multiple writers, but but they still all represent the outlet. And when an outlet gives a game a 9 out of 10, and then suddenly they're putting up articles saying the game isn't a 9 out of 10, it just doesn't look good for them. If you're going to, you know, work this way, then every single writer who could potentially talk about it should release their own reviews on it. IGN should have a panel of reviews that you can click on. So let's say they have four writers who are talking about, you know, the latest and greatest AAA games, all four of those writers who could potentially put up Veilguard articles need to have their own reviews so you can compare the scores, but that's not the way these outlets work because, of course, they don't want to pay multiple people to do the same exact thing. And now they're saying that, well, yeah, um, it's actually not all that perfect, saying, I do not think these inclusive elements should be a big deal in an ideal world. In fact, the reason I'm writing this is because I want to take a story with these elements in it seriously, as if there wasn't a big culture war brimming overhead, including a certain election result that'll likely result in harm to my friends across the pond. Of course, they could not help themselves but bring politics into this discussion. Opinion instantly discarded. You wouldn't just uh, deserve representation. We deserve representation in stories that are also broadly good. We ought to be able to engage with these stories in the same way we engage with any piece of art, with deep investment and a thoughtful idea to identity that works and what doesn't. I want to talk as if the storm clouds were not looming. And I say this all the time, inclusivity and diversity are great things. They're perfectly fine things in entertainment. But when you shove them in people's faces and you're only adding that in order to check off boxes on a checklist. It's not going to sit well with a lot of people. And it didn't in this case. You have a character like Tosh who constantly talks about their identity and about how they do not think that they're a woman anymore. They are non-binary. And that's the only part of their story. I mean, they are not a fully fleshed out character. It's like if you have a character who goes, oh, you know, I'm confident, I'm passionate, I'm you know, somebody who maybe has an element like, I love my family, I'd do anything for them. By the way, I happen to be gay. And that's like a small part of the puzzle as to who they are. It's just one small piece versus Tosh who goes, I'm non-binary. I want to put this before anything else. I don't care that I'm a, not a fully fleshed out character. I'm just here to be a representative character. It's ridiculous. It's not going to go over well. It takes you out of the immersion. It makes it so at the end of the day, it's a character that's only going to be remembered because of their sexual identity, because of their gender, things 
of these natures, and Tosh is not the only character in this game that has that problem, several of them do, but Tosh is the primary example, and now people are roasting PC gamers saying, you guys are backtracking, backpedaling too much, you losers were pushing for this type of stuff, you are part of one of the reasons why gaming has been declining. These games were master classes in inclusivity without lecturing their audience, Bioware couldn't give a nuanced story honoring Dragon Age Dark Fantasy's legacy if their lives depended on it. Two weeks old and can't even break 90k on Steam, all of you shilled for this game and gave it high marks when you knew it it was garbage. Yeah, I mean, it just looks so terrible for them because they were initially saying it was near perfection and now they're changing their tune and IGN is doing the same exact thing. They had just put out an article titled The Veil Guard is awkwardly in conflict with itself, torn into pieces that reflect a sequel to a decade-old RPG and a fresh beginning with no ties to what came before. That is why you should not be giving it a 9 out of fucking 10. This game does, you know, trash the legacy of these older games, of the games that came before. They do not care about the fact that it's an established franchise, and they do not want to respect the gamers who are nostalgic. They simply wanted to make a modern audience Dragon Age, and it didn't work for them. But what's even worse is that the media had said, oh my gosh, it's perfect. And then you have individuals like Jason Schreier saying, get woke, go broke, I want to own the chuds, saying the game was doing fantastic, and then he deletes the posts because he realizes, ah, oh, shit, it's not doing as good as we thought. It can't even top 100k players on Steam. And what's hilarious is that only yesterday when I'm recording this video, the latest farming simulator game came out, and it topped 125,000 players day fucking one. Imagine being Bioware, working on a game for nine years and getting wrecked by a farming simulator. And sure, we don't know the console numbers, but it's clear as day that people just want to have fun in their video games. They don't want to be preached to constantly. They don't want narratives shoved in their face. And Dragon Age the Veil Guard does only that. It exists in order to be a piece of fucking propaganda. And it's so sad because... You can do inclusion. You can do diversity in a story like this. Look at Final Fantasy 16. Look at how well-written Dion was. He was a fully fleshed out character who happened to be gay and you actually saw his, you know, romance storyline kind of play out and it was so sad and you felt so bad for him and you felt connected to him and he was an amazing character who happened to be gay and nobody complained because he was well-written. Just... Pick better writers. Pick people who know franchises and who know how to tell authentic and stories that actually have depth to them. And that is something that the modern gaming industry is severely lacking right now. And I can't help but point and laugh at IGN and PC Gamer for walking back on their scores. And sure, again, we're talking about people who, you know, we're not the ones leaving the reviews. But on the flip side... When an IGN puts up a 9 out of 10, that reflects the outlet in totality. And so when they put up another article that goes exactly against that, it's still not a good look. It's like with Forbes. I talk about Forbes quite a lot. You have Eric Kane, who's actually a decent person and a really good journalist, and he points out the fact that a lot of games that come out now are simply propaganda. And then you have Paul Tassi who says, oh, we need more DEI in the industry. We need more new initiatives and we need products to be diverse. And the ones that aren't like Black Myth, Wukong or Trash, you're talking about polar opposites working at, on the same general topics and at the same outlet. And it's not a good look for Forbes to have two people going completely against each other. And in a lot of cases, they actually bicker. So I can't say I'm shocked to see this happening with these outlets. Now that we're hearing that this game is not selling, the player counts have not been going up. They've only been drastically declining. I, of course, will be keeping my eye on Dragon Age The Veil Guard, but now the mainstream media is very, very quickly walking back on what they initially said about this game. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I'll talk to you all again in the next video really soon.